All right. So now, obviously, you're not going to be seeing me um, actually taking the measurements specifically, okay? But what I'm going to be doing here is we're going to be modeling, as you guys know, right? We're going to be modeling the original Kraken handle, okay? As close to as we as we can reasonably get it, right? Now, I'm not planning on cloning this or something, right? Um, and so it's it's not that big of a deal uh, if it's not quite perfect. Some of these things normally I would not be showing or or doing right. Um, like like for example, the jimping on the side is irrelevant to what I would be doing, right? Unless I was trying to duplicate it just for the purposes of making it more iconic to a kraken or or like um, reminiscent of a kraken, right? On my handles, I would normally not be doing that. But since this is sort of a video on explaining to people how to go about faithfully recreating something, I'm going to try to get as close as I can, right? Um, and I'm going to be taking notes on a piece of paper here, and uh, I will, I'll try to remember to scan and upload that and put a link somewhere for people to see the notes I would make on a piece of paper, right? So um, what we're going to be doing here is we've got a CAD model, okay, this is SOLIDWORKS, and we're going to be going about finding the best way to recreate it, right? You can recreate it kind of by taking all kinds of different measurements, but sometimes if you can use relations um, or constraints, I suppose, uh, effectively, you'll end up with a more accurate result, right? Now, if you really wanted to be precise on some things, especially things that have like an organic shape, you would take a very high resolution scan of it and you would use that to start your sketch and then you would start adding constraints in there, right? I'm not going to be doing that for this one because it just doesn't matter. And so, yeah, uh, that's a, the situation with that. Um, now, Jame, uh, well, actually, I should probably say we have a few other people here. So we have uh, Jame, we have Ash and we have Ethan. Okay, Ethan is interested in learning how to make CAD models, and so I it was actually his idea for me to share this so that other people could see it. And so you might be hearing questions from them throughout this, right? Uh, now, James is the one who lent me his Kraken, and you're very welcome. I'm I'm sorry. Did I thank you at some? I, I you must have misheard me. I don't recall thanking you. I just was informing people, in fact, that you had... No, I'm just entitled to your... Oh, to your... okay. I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Um, but okay. now, uh, James is, is scared because he knows how incompetent I am, and so he doesn't want me to press the pins out. Actually, he never told me that. I just uh, I just decided not to press them out. Um, although that might impact at some point the some important parts of the fitment of the handles, right? That location of the Zen pin is very important. And so um, unfortunately, regardless of whether he likes it or not, his knife might be getting disassembled in a destructive manner just to get those dimensions. Uh, you're fine with that, right? If if there becomes a problem with it, I'll just ask Squid to fix it. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. A, a, a real maker. <laughs> a legitimate one. Right, right, not a, not a poser. All right, so... Let's see. Um, let's start with, uh, we're going to just create a, a sketch from above. Oh, I'm not streaming, am I? I, I really... Uh, yeah, you kind of... It's an awkward moment right there. Uh, I'm sorry, is something funny? Yeah, Ash sent me a message. <laughs> what did he say? He said, did he start? And I just <laughs> thought it was funny. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. Um, all right, so you, can you guys see the uh, stream? You know. Yeah, we can. All right. So let me just... Uh... Sorry, I just leaked the DMs there. Dude, way to leak someone's personal DMs. That's a little cringe if you ask me. Listen, assume that if you message me, it's public information. I heard you do. Somebody as promiscuous as you. God. Um, all right. So... We're going to just get an overall length here real quick of the handles, okay? Um, wow. Are you astonished by our silence? No, I'm amazed at how long this is. Yeah, it's a long boy. 
Why do you always have to phrase things in like the most unfortunate way? I don't know. I think I'm good at it. At least you're good at something. Um, I know. So we're getting 5.678. Okay. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, let me just write this down. Uh, What's that as a fraction? <laughs> Five and six hundred and seventy-eight thousandths, James. Thank you. I got Can you. you reduce bro. that. Uh, five and three hundred thirty-nine five hundredths. I think. Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. Um, is that good enough for you, James? Is anything I do um, good enough for you? No. I so thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so 5.678 is the overall length. And so the question is, is 5.678 the overall, like the actual length? Is that how he designed it? Um, is it 5.675? And just because James is such a bad flipper and he's dropped it so many times, you know, it's built up a burr, right? Is it maybe 5.68, right? It's probably 5.675, probably. So I'm, I'm sure gonna, nobody would notice if it was like, you know, three thousandths or whatever. I understand that your your standards are just low uh, in, in like all areas of your life, James. But for the purposes of, of making an accurate model, we would like to maintain a certain level of uh, of quality. Well, you're just assuming that it's five, <laughs> seven, five, right? Like, dude, you know what they say about assumptions? Actually, I don't. And that's ironic. Yikes, bro. All right. Um. Now, the thickness of the overall handle, okay, is 0 0.503. Now, that's probably 0 0.5, right? Um, so we're going to go with 0 0.5. And this is an example of how you can kind of get caught up in stuff, right? So if you measure this and you say, oh, it's 0 0.503, what are the chances that he actually made it 0 0.503 intentionally, right? Um, I've designed it in millimeters too. Yeah, but um, it's unlikely. He's using European tooling. Yeah, but like zero point five oh three is not like an even number for uh, millimeters anyway. Yeah, what's the fraction? All right, James. We're gonna have a new rule: important questions only. Okay. Um, so let's start with this. Uh, we're going to just start by making the top here, right? So we're going to go like this, and we're going to do a radius down here at the bottom, all right? Now, we're going to deliberately make these a little bit wonky, okay? The reason is we want to rely on constraints to get it correct as opposed to relying on like, oh, it looks correct, something like that, right? You want to make it really obvious that it isn't correct. So, for example, this one, um, it's you can tell that this is not tangent, right? So we're going to go ahead and add a tangent constraint here. Uh, oh, that's not a tangent constraint. I'm treating this like fusion. Um, and we're going to do the same thing on this side here. Okay, you, There is a way to just create a, a tangent arc, but, you know. Um, so... Let's go ahead and make this coincident with the uh, origin. Now, uh, we know that these points here are going to be vertically constrained, right? Assuming that we're designing this, you know, where the center line is going to be horizontal. Those are going to be vertically constrained. All right, let's go ahead and put a center line through here, right? Now, we know that the overall length is 5.675. Okay. And... So we've got that overall length. Now, the, the thickness we'll deal with later, okay? Now, everybody does things a little bit differently, okay? Um, I personally have a tendency to kind of like try to get all the important structural holes in like the first go of it, right? Um, and so I'm, I'm going to do that on this one, all right? So let's go ahead and see. We've got what looks like a um, 3 16 inch pivot hole. And it is 0 0.1880, right? Which is what you would expect from a 3 16 inch pivot hole, right? So let's go ahead and model that pivot hole here, okay? Uh, oh, I'm like really not 
doing this correctly. Uh, Isn't that the point of what we're doing here, so that we do it correctly? It is, actually. Um, so we've got that, right? Now, I'm not going to model the counter bores, although you could. There's plenty of reasons why that would be a good move. Okay, the counter bores are 0 0.26. Um, got two point or zero point two six inch counter bores, and that's likely because if you got a screw head that's zero point two five inches, you need extra clearance, right? I believe the reps is normally zero point two six five instead of zero point two six or something like that. Um, but that's why that's happening there, right? Now, uh, while we're at this, uh, let's go ahead and get the thickness down here at the base, okay? So I'm gonna to touch this off with calipers. Now, how you hold the calipers can matter on this. Um, you wanna to try to have the best contact area possible, but you're, you're also, in this case, dealing with a lot of burrs, right? And so I, no matter where I'm putting it, I'm tending to get about 0 0.529, 0, 0 0.5295, 0 0.5285, 0 0.529, 0 0.530, right? So you can you want to measure it a few different times and, and kind of wiggle the calipers around while applying even but not like excessive force, right, on the caliper wheel. Um, and so what that what that tells us is that this is 0 0.530, right? Um, now we're gonna go ahead and make this a horizontal constraint here, okay? And wait, are these? Oh, that's weird. Why did it add that? Did I click on the wrong thing? Um, let's see if we can get away with this here. Uh, we may need to redo this. So at the top here, this is 0 0.42 inches in diameter. 420 okay and this is defining the radius so we're going to do it divided by two okay and so what is not constrained on this ah okay so right now i'm just going to guesstimate this radius at i don't know half inch or something on this arc right here um it's probably a half inch radius but for now we're going to stick with that just so this is fully defined we can we can adjust that later all right so we've got the structural hole for the pivot here. Now, in fact, the pivot and the Zen pin are really the only structural holes when the knife is assembled. But in reality, they're, they're not really the only structural holes because the way he does this, I would imagine, is he's using these other holes along the handle as fixturing points, right? That's why they're countersunk, okay? Um, it's my guess, right? I could be wrong. But you want those to be you know correct as well so you don't want to like undervalue dimensions or something like that so now we're going to measure the distance uh actually first let's get the uh diameter does anybody have any questions at this point uh nope i'm just following along on my kraken okay cool uh yeah, sweet so this is a five thirty seconds inch hole right here okay um, because when we measure this, we're getting 0 0.155, okay, 0 0.155, so 0 0.1555, 0 0.155, 0 0.1555, and 530 seconds of an inch is 0 0.15625, okay, so it's not far enough off for it to be indicative of any kind of a different, like clearly this is a 532nd inch drill, right? Um, and he would not be reaming a hole like this. So it's not out of the question that it would be undersized either. So that's a 532nd inch hole. And there's gonna be another hole here, another hole down here at the base, okay? Now I deliberately put this off center and then we're gonna click on this and we're gonna make it coincident, okay? Now, my guess is these holes are the same size because he's using them for fixturing. And so there's no reason to have them be a different size. And you also save on tool changes, right? 
Uh, if you really wanted to save on tool changes, you could make up three sixteenths of an inch, but that has other potential downsides to it, right? Um, so these are all the same. So instead of going and defining all these individually, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this, click on this, click on this, and we're going to say they're equal, all right? Now, that doesn't tell them where they're located yet, right? All we know is they're located on this line, right? That there are, I mean, I suppose that's not all we know. That's all that the software knows, right? So we're going to start by measuring the distance between your point two or two point oh seven seven five. Now, the reality is, um, okay, we're going to just use a driven dimension to do this or to find out what it was initially at. Okay, so two point oh seven seven five is what we're getting from the these little edges right here. So by holding a shift and clicking on it, I'm selecting the actual size of the circle, not the center. Okay, so we're going to do 2.0775. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create another dimension here from the center. And we're going to put this down here. And this is a driven dimension. But do you see how it's 2.249? Mm -hmm. What that means is that this was originally 2.25 inches, right? So instead of dimensioning it like this from the calipers, right, we're going to get rid of this extra potential tolerance stack issue, right? We're going to delete this dimension. We're going to delete this dimension here. And we're going to go ahead and just select from the centers now. And we're going to do 2.25, right? Because when people are making models like this, what are the chances that he put it at 2.249, right? Like, of course, he's not doing that. It's 2.25 inches. It's two and a quarter inches, right? So one of the things I see a lot with other people when they're making CAD models is they get way too caught up on what the calipers tell them. And you can't, right? Y you need to be focused on what's realistic, right? Like what is actually happening? This is probably one and three eighths of an inch. Oh my God, I actually think I got that correct. Let's give this a try. 1.314 is approximately what we're getting between these. 1.314. Okay, and then now we're going to do the same thing here, right? It's just, and, and you can work this out on paper if you really want to take. Um, so here's, so maybe this isn't 1.375. Maybe it's 1.475. So I was wrong, right? Uh, because when you have two holes of the same diameter like this, uh, instead of just adding the two radii together, you can just take one diameter, right? Which is 5 seconds of an inch, and which is 0 0.1565. So obviously it can't be, one and three eighths of an inch because then it would be 1.375 which is less than 0 0.15625 greater than 1.314 right so i should have known that that wasn't the case but um this is probably i don't know it's it's probably 1.47 let me see what it is from the other one here uh no, it's not. So here's another case, okay? What he's done here is he's got, so this is an example of, again, you can't read into the calipers too much. So I just measured the distance between the side walls of these two holes and the side walls of these two holes here, okay? And they're the same, okay? And so what that means is, you know, this center line, I don't know that I want to, Okay, so there's other ways to do this, but I'm going to just do this kind of like a ghetto way. That, that way people can see what we're doing here. Okay, so we're going to go up here, and we're going to put something here. We're going to put something here. We're going to put something here. Okay, now this, we're going to constrain to be vertical. Okay, this is more so for the purpose of illustrating. You, you can basically have, you can use dimensions as variables in, in CAD, CAD software like this, which is like the right way to go about doing this. Or you can draw two lines and make them equal. But that's what we're going to be doing here, basically. Okay, so we're going to say that, what's up? Um, is the hole at the bottom of the handles not a larger size than the other two? It is not. On one handle. Let me check on the other handle for you. Remember how I told you I wasn't, particularly impressed with some of this stuff. Yes. Um, this could be intentional, by the way. So the other one is 3 16ths of an inch, right? And it gives you that different countersink size, right? Now, I don't know why he does that. Like, I, I really have no idea. What it could be is he changed the model or changed the process 
uh, at some point and he had a mix of the handles. Are they both larger on yours? Yes, they are both larger on mine. Okay, so he changed the process. Right. What about for, Zen pins? for the Zen pins, we'll do those in a bit. Um, that's going to be potentially harder to get an accurate location on, but I'm still going to try. Okay. Um, the reality is the best way to go about getting the Zen pin location, it, I think, is to model the blade using a scan, a high resolution scan. Um, you can you can often get very very close, especially with a blade shape like this. Uh, you can get very very close to just guess like with just guesstimating it but then you would make an assembly and you would start positioning the handles so that you can get the handle gap approximately what you want and what you will find is that zen pin location that that spacing is probably just like the rest of this right it's going to be a, a number that makes sense right um so you, you so when can, you say a blade shape like this do you mean a simple one the tang area itself because it has flat is going to make using constraints very easy to recreate it Okay. Um, that's why. If you have something like the, the blade shape on a 62, it's, there's a lot more curves, right? In, in some it's cases, round. there's splines, right? And so it's very hard to use constraints on this. But with this one, I mean, you can look at this and you can say, all right, that point is approximately 100 degrees, right? And it'd be a lot easier if you took a scan of this, right? Or you can use a, a little protractor. You can measure the angle. Um, but it's probably 100 degrees, right? Um, and you can measure the distance between those two pivot holes. You can measure the distance between the size of the pivot holes and the size of the tang. You can measure, um, you know, between one edge of one of the tang, uh, or the Zen nipple to the opposite, uh, pivot, right? That's a potentially really important dimension, right? Same with the other way, right? You can, so anyway, I'll, I'll probably do the blade either later tonight or most likely a different time or never at all. Okay. Um, is the reality of it. So, but yes, so that if you really needed to get an accurate Zen pin location, which I do need to do, that's yeah. the best way to go about it if you're not able to disassemble the knife, right? And okay. to be honest with you, I don't know that I want to push the pin out. I just why? Think that's, because it's aluminum. I see. And why? It might damage the supporting material? No, you just, you know, aluminum is not particularly abrasion resistant and so if you're pushing a hardened steel pin out even if it's not hardened steel if you're pushing a steel pin out of it like when you put it back in again it's going to be looser right like you see what i'm saying okay. and and so i i feel like it's it's one of those things there is no way around that like if you screw it up you you're well your best bet is buying a slightly larger uh pin uh and then put pressing it in but if you were stuck using the same pins the handle is now scrap and thus the knife is scrap right so that's why uh, but anyway so what we're doing here we're now going to say that this here we, we've said that this point on this line and this point in the center are vertically constrained okay and now we're going to say these two here are equal okay now because we have that we no longer have to worry about whatever this dimension is he used this as the halfway point okay and so now uh, we're going to, let's get the overall, let me see. So first I'm going to measure, right now I'll tell you what I'm measuring. I'm measuring from this hole right here to this hole right here, the, the walls of it, to see if that's how he dimensioned this. 2.785, 2.785, probably not. Um, oh God, this point is really sharp on my calipers. 5.022, 5 5.020, 5 let's see, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test and see, this doesn't seem like it would be a round dimension, but 5.192 now, um, Two point nine four two. 
No. Right now, so I'm basically trying to figure out what he used to dimension it because there's probably a dimension here. Oh, I wonder. Did we? Did I already check what the uh, distances between these two? Yeah, I did. Um, okay, we're gonna now check what the distance is from this to the end here. If that's how he did it. Ooh. That's probably what he did. So he probably did this as 0 0.275 from the end. I don't know that for sure, but it seems like a plausible explanation for this. Um, oops. Okay, ah, damn it. All right, that's my guess. I, I don't really know, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not sure how he did it, but this is probably going to be approximately correct, okay? Um, this should only be off by a couple thou now. Yeah, we're just going to roll with this for now. Um, but anyway, this would be a case where depending on what you're trying to do, you might want to go on what the calipers say, okay? Um, just for anybody who's watching, who's doing this. There, there are times where you want to go with what the calipers say. This might be one of those times, but I'm not going to because I'm kind of an asshole. Um, all right. Let's see. So those are the, the crucial dimensions. Now... For later dimensions, let's see if there's a way I can get this. Um, so I'm, right now what I'm trying to do is measure the distance from uh, the top of the pivot to the Zen pin. I'm getting 0 0.51516. I believe this pin, let me just double check. Yeah, it's an eighth of an inch, a little undersized. Oh, interesting, it's undersized. Why is it undersized? Why is he using an undersized pin? Okay. Well, we're going to, for the sake of modeling this real quick, we're going to just, um, you know what? I'm actually not even going to put this because I don't want to have to try to fully define it. Um, we're just going to make a note that the uh, pin is 0 0.123 inches now it's better to measure that with uh a micrometer but like i said that involves disassembling the knife or the, the getting the pin out i don't think that's a wise move when you're dealing with aluminum um you do want this knife back in one piece right james i would assume no i can reassemble it i was i meant like you would like it to function you know what let's just pretend i didn't make that joke all right i'm sorry that i'm disabled it's not my fault it's okay <laughs> thank you for being i'm selfish. also gay <laughs> How dare you? Um, all right. So uh, let's see. Uh, so this is going to be a potential issue uh, trying to get these dimensions here. All right. Well, that's a problem we're going to have to deal with later. Right now, we're going to just be working on the handle without the Zen pin. All right. So you'll notice that all these lines are black with the exception of this, but that's okay. This line, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, because this is just, it doesn't matter where it is. It's construction. Um, but all the lines that matter are black, which means that they're fully defined, right? Which, which means trying to move this isn't going to do anything. Trying to move this isn't going to do anything, right? They're all fully defined. And so that's what you want, right? If it's blue, yeah, you can roll with it, but you might find out the hard way that that's, a, that, that's how you make really expensive mistakes, right? So I'm going to exit the sketch. And then now we're going to, now I know there's ways you can do this with master modeling and stuff. I'm not wasting my time with that right now. Uh, this is 0 0.5. I know it was 0 0.503 that we mentioned before, but we're just going to be doing it as 0 0.5 right now, okay? This is the overall thickness of the handles, 
Okay, so we're gonna be just naming this stock. Um, right, so you can see what we've got here, right? It makes sense. Um, now, let's see, what do we wanna start with next? I think we should definitely start working on the slot. Now, it should be 5 16 of an inch about. No, it's more. Why? There's 10 thou extra. Why? Hmm. They're standard washers. Let me see. I think they're standard washers. So the washers are. Oops. No, so maybe I was doing the math wrong here. Um, Wait, I'm okay. Put one six three. So it's three thou extra. More than three thou extra, probably. Probably three and a half thou extra. I mean, it could make sense, right? Like, uh, you know, you would want a certain amount of clearance, right? You don't need an interference fit. Um, so, 3.166. Six. I don't know. I mean, it makes sense. Um, but it's interesting because I haven't actually really done. Okay, so I don't have a micrometer for the blade, but if you've got a blade that is uh, 0 0.125, which this one is, and you have bushings on that blade, um, you want about a thou and a half of clearance. But that's not on both sides, that's overall, okay? So you would want 0 0.1265 bushings, right? So that takes up a thou and a half of that clearance. Another thou and a half makes sense, okay? So that's that makes sense. Um, so we're going to roll with what the calipers tell us on this one. Um, this is not something that he would be putting in a fractional measurement for, okay? 0.166 is what we're getting. Again, you're wiggling the calipers a little bit back and forth to make sure they're flat, and then also you're rocking it to get the lowest measurement, right? Um, so here's the thing. It's gonna be tempting for you to click sketch and click on this sidewall, right? But most likely, most likely, uh, it is, I wonder though if it is. So basically what I'm trying to figure out right now is does which direction it was this uh, sketch done from. Um, right, so it's gonna be tempting to click on this face right here, okay? But what I would suggest doing instead, okay, is creating an offset plane, okay? Because what you gotta think about is if you're machining this, right, and you're looking at it like this, right? First off, you probably want a, a constant thickness on the wall here. Okay, and just because that's gonna give you extra clearance for the blade, right? It's, it's just a better way to do it. You're gonna be removing more material and you're gonna end up with a better balanced knife probably, right? I personally already, the blade's pretty lightweight on this. Um, and so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be clicking this face, okay? And we're gonna be uh, flipping this, flip normal. We're gonna just offset it by an inch or something. Okay, 
uh, or we can make it a little bit closer if you really want to. 0 0.75, right? And that's going to be giving us this, um, this plane that we can work with, okay? And you'll notice that this plane right here, let me see if I can get the pixels lining up, right? You'll notice that it's parallel with this back face, right? And that's gonna matter later when we go to do an extrusion, all right? Um, this is probably how he did it. All right, so we're gonna start out with, um, I don't have very good lighting right here, but I think, okay. So we're going like this, and what's gonna happen here is there's gonna be a little arc, okay? And it's gonna go in like this, okay? And we're gonna be drawing another line here, okay? All the way down here. And there's gonna be another arc down here, okay? Now this is gonna be a semicircle, all right? And then what we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and get a center line going through here. First off, we're gonna put this on the center line, okay? Um, and then what we'll do is we will mirror this, this, and this over this center line here, all right? Uh, all right, now, we need to get this fixed up here, right? So first off, this is gonna be tangent, okay? Uh, because you're using a rotating cutting tool here for this, okay? So it, it kinda has to be tangent, all right? This is not gonna be tangent, all right? Uh, because it's, it's coming out with this cutter here, okay? Well, it's actually, in this orientation, it's coming in like this, uh, but, you can look at it, it's, this is hard to see without looking at the uh, knife, but you can tell just by looking at it, even with the chamfer, that, that this is how it's shaped, right? Now, the question is, what's the radius of this, right? Well, let's start by getting the radius of this. This is not going to give us that answer necessarily, although it might. Um, the radius of this, because it's a perfect semicircle like this, is going to be whatever the distance is between these two sides here. Okay, that's the diameter I mean, I'm sorry, not the radius. Um, which happens to be 3 16ths of an inch, okay? So we're gonna say that this is 0 0.1875, which is 3 16ths of an inch divided by two because we're doing the radius. Um, and so that's what you get there. Now, we know over here what the distance between these two points is, or these two lines is, right? And that is 0 0.1, did I do that other part correctly? I think I did. Uh, 0 0.166, okay? Um, and so the question is, what's the radius of this, right? It's probably 3 16ths of an inch, but it is probably no less than 5 30 seconds of an inch. I'm sorry, diameter of this. So whatever this is divided by two. Uh, the diameter of this arc is probably not less than 5 30 seconds of an inch. The reason is when you're doing a deep cut like this slot here, right? You want to have as much rigidity as possible. And so you will generally find, and, and I, I understand that there are trade-offs with this. And, and so you might use an eighth inch tool or something, but you would generally want as rigid of a tool as possible. And so you're going to be using as close to the, the width of the slot as possible to be doing this so you can have the most rigidity possible on that tool. So you have as little tool deflection as possible, right? And so you are gonna want this to be, um, or, or you're gonna wanna use like a 532nd inch tool because a 532nd inch tool is about as close as you can get to 0 0.166 with a fractional system, right? Um, unless you order custom tools, okay? So it's also gonna give you, 5 thou clearance on each side, which is probably plenty for getting, you know, coolant in. Um, and plus it's not gonna be on either side when you're cutting, it's gonna be a total of 10 thou on the side you're not cutting on, right? So that gives you a chance to get coolant in there or air blast or whatever, miss whatever it is that he would be using, right? So that's, that's the thinking behind this, is that this is probably 5 30 seconds of an inch or more. So it's either 3 16 or 5 30 seconds. And I'm gonna make it 3 16 of an inch because you generally don't want to be cutting an inside radius like this using the actual diameter of your tool because you get a large increase in tool engagement. Um, 
With this, less so because you're just not engaging that much, but cutting something like this, you're going to get a substantial tool engagement. Although I suppose it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, you're already going to, even with, with this small of a change in the, the, the or difference in the diameter of the tool versus the diameter of this cut here, you're still going to have a pretty hefty tool engagement. So I suppose it doesn't matter. Maybe you would just do 530 seconds here. But I think that 316 would be a better design anyway. So we're going to go with 316 over 2. Uh, or wait a second. Yeah. Uh, this is the radius. Okay. Hey, do you know if this is a Kraken V1 or 2? I have no idea. It's what? a V1. It's a V1? Okay. Oh, all right. Why? Does this not match up with what you have? Uh, no. Hello? Is he cutting out for you guys? Like, is he hard to hear? Yes. Did I cut out? Hello? Um, no, I notice anything different. Okay. So far, I don't believe that there but should there be any might... difference. Yeah, I don't. I think it's just okay. the same thing nipple. That's fine. But... So now, question is how far down does this occur? So I'm going to be pushing the calipers with a, I mean, a fair amount of force into this so that hopefully it will catch on that arc. This is one way of doing it. It's not necessarily the best. Uh, I believe the main difference between V1s and V2s in so far as their machining is that um, the V1 was cut using like a... I'm not really sure of the terms here, but the piece was held sideways on the back of the channel and a drill would drop in and cut all the way up to the um to the pivot area whereas on the v2s and v2.5s it's held uh sideways on the face of the handle and a t-slot cutter is used instead right so a t-slot cutter did not do what i'm looking at right now it did not. Right. So a mill was used to do this. And so something like this would not be something you would find when doing a, using a T-slot cutter unless it was like a custom T-slot cutter ground to have something like this radius on it, which would actually be potentially a really good idea, right? Um, you could achieve something similar to this. Um, you would just have to sweep out of the cut kind of thing. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I don't have one of the, the, like one of the ones that was done that way, so I don't really know. Um, I'm just trying to get like a rough estimate of kind of how this, how this here. Uh... If you're interested, I can show you my V2 on camera later. Sure. So this is like 0 0.806 or something. This is what is so what this is saying. Um, I'm just going to go with the calipers on this because this is not a critical dimension. It, it really doesn't matter all that much. But is this not going to let me? Okay. All right. Um, so let's see. All right. So um, this is going to look a little weird for a bit here, but it's just going to have to. We're just going to have to roll with it. Just you'll see why later. All right. So I'm measuring from this. Uh, come on. Okay, so I'm going to say this is 0 0.7155 from this to here. 0 0.716, let's go with 0 0.716. Now, I'm doing the same thing as before. I want to see what this was, 0 0.81. I wonder if there's a connection between this 0 0.81 and this 0 0.806. There must be. I bet you he did a slot and centered it. Right? Because if you take a slot and you center it, right, you make the center of this the center of this line and you make it the same, then you're going to end up with 
0.810 or something. And then what he probably defined was the length of this slot. Um, that's probably how he did it. I don't know. Okay, I'm just trying to think through. And that would explain that that would mean that this here was also the same as this over here. Okay. Um, and the reason this is our 0 0.094 is because 3 32nds is uh, half of 3 16 right? This is a 3 16 inch diameter, and 3 32nds is 0 0.09375 or something like that. It's like 9375 or something. It's something like that, but that's why this is not 3 16 of an inch right here. It's because it's the radius. Um, but because these are so similar, it makes me think what he probably did here was use this tool right here. And what that would allow you to do is you would do something like this, okay? And then you would define this to be 330 seconds uh, radius, okay? And you would have a line. I'm just gonna show you above the knife right now so you guys can understand what I'm talking about here, right? So this point and this point, you're gonna have a vertical constraint, okay? And you're gonna have a vertical constraint between these points right here, okay? And then what you're gonna do is, now you would you would be able to do this right on the line, okay? But we're gonna take the midpoint of this, midpoint of this, and then we're gonna say, this is vertical, which means that it's in line. And then you would pick a size of this. Line. Let me see right now what this gives us. Uh, I wanna see what this dimension is, 4.055, probably not that, but maybe. 4.243 is awfully close to 4.25. My guess is that's how he did this, okay? And then he used the trim entities to merge this, which it, or, or it was multiple different operations, okay? So again, I'm gonna keep it how I have it here, but what I'm trying to do is explain to you guys if you really want to recreate something exact, like the exact model somebody has, this is how you would try to go about reverse engineering it, okay? Is how did they go about building this? And this to me seems about right because 0 0.810 and 0 0.806 are very, very close. That's two thousandths away from being centered, two thousandths of an inch, right? Um, and it's also not a very round number, right? Even if you're considering like measuring from the sidewalls versus measuring from the center, um, it makes a lot more sense that he would say this distance here is 4.25 inches and then he centers it, right? So that's my guess, okay? But we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and... James, do you think I should implement it that way or do you think I should just go with the caliper dimensions? Um, I think probably the calipers. Okay. Okay. Um, in that case, I will leave this here just because it, it's, I want to remember later. Um, I'm going to actually make this 0 0.810, uh, because I think that's actually probably more, more or close to being specifically accurate. Um, so anyway, but what I just did there, what you saw me doing above it, if you did that right on the handle, that's, that is how you would recreate it that way. Okay. For anyone who's interested. So. Now we've got this, we wanna make this a closed loop here so we can make an extrusion out of this, okay? And so we're gonna do that. And now again, this is a case where it would really help to be able to take this apart. But that looks, actually it looks like it's more than an eighth of an inch for the thickness of this wall here. But we can do this just using the, the depth measurement probably. Uh, yeah, we'll do that in a bit. Um, all right, so the question is, how far do we make this cut, right? Now, we don't have to worry about, you know, having a weird tapered wall here because this is going to be parallel to the wall we're cutting up to, right? So as you see, we can get really close, but it's still going to be a wall there, right? You don't have an issue where suddenly the wall forms a sharp edge because it's, you know, parallel with the center line or, you know, even sharper an even steeper edge because you've used this as your sketch plane, right? Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do offset from surface and we're going to say this because this is likely how he did it, right? So we're going to say it's offset by zero point, you know, we're going to say five thirty seconds of an inch, okay? Because uh, that, is that, 
don't know if it's quite that much. Uh, let's go with one four for now. Oops, that's one one four. Uh, one four for now. Okay. Now I know it looks weird. I know it looks weird. Okay, we'll we'll get to this in a bit. Um, interesting. It actually might be an eighth of an inch because where those holes line up on the underside. Let's make it an eighth of an inch. Okay, I bet you it is an eighth of an inch. It's just the lighting. Um, so we're going to go with an eighth of an inch for now. This looks like what it looks like on the underside. So my guess is an eighth of an inch. Okay, now, um, let's see. How does he likely do this part here? I would guess he would do this as the same operation i'm trying to look at the tool marks and see if there's any mismatch um but i would guess he's just going to do this all as one operation which means we want to use the same sketch plane okay now um let's get a measurement here um ever anybody have any questions so far um not really i mean i'm just i'm following along It does. It looks a bit fat. Is that going to, um, like, is it just an illusion because in which it hasn't direction? been rounded this yet? One? At the end. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Like, like right it looks here. Fat. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It looks about <laughs> accurate to me. It, it could just be an illusion. I, I'm I'm trying to figure out what you mean by fat. Like, are you talking about the distance from here to the edge? No, um, like Talking about looks, the thickness, yeah, the tallness, yeah, uh, that's probably the case, yeah, is my guess. I mean, try looking at yours from the side, I think you'll find it it lines up almost perfectly, um but if you think I'm incorrect, tell me it's just it's really hard for me to tell because mine's been rounded, so it seems thinner, oh, okay, yeah, that would be rough, um. Wait, rounded aftermarket? No, 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 no. Um, like it's uh, it's got like the normal crack and rounding, the one that your has yours has on it. Okay. Like the radius at the ends of the handles. All right. Um, let's go ahead and do this this part here. Try to estimate it. We can we can deal with this later. Uh, like we can finalize this later. So what we do know here is we're gonna have another cut. Okay, I'm going to make this wall here. And this is just going to be, if you look from the other side, so forget about this other stuff we've done. I want you to look from the other side, right? You don't see any of this extra cutaway from the other side, right? It's all um, in line with this thinner portion, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and do this. In fact, let me show you. You can do a tangent arc like this. Uh, Let's see. Oh, it's not going to want to do it now. Brilliant. I don't want to talk about it. All right. That goes like that. Um, and the reason why, oh, why is, oh, it's because we haven't defined the distance. Um, so because I clicked on these points, right, it already knows what this distance is. And as you can see, it is flat. There is no step there, right? So it's, it's fine that it lines up that way. What we need to find is what the distance is, um, what measurement he likely used for this. So I'm going to try something here. Same little trick I was doing before. Um, Now we're gonna to try to figure out what dimension he used. It could be 4.875. 8.75 is a round number, that's four and seven eighths, okay? Um, could be 
could be 0 0.8 from this, it wouldn't actually make a difference because if you increase this by 2,000, you'd be decreasing this by 2,000. So it probably doesn't matter, but I'm going to go with crap. Let's see. Um, are you sure I can't take an angle, gr an angle grinder to this, James? 100%. That's really selfish of you, I just want to say. I don't care. I'm okay with being selfish. <laughs> just poking fun. Um, all right, let's see. So... So here's the thing, right? I like the concept of 4.875 better. I know this doesn't really matter, but the reality is when you're doing work on this part of a CAD model, you're generally like zoomed in and doing stuff offset from here, right? Like you're, you're doing your measurements from like the top of the pivot or something, right? It's not that, I mean, it's not exactly unheard of, right? For you to be using stuff from down here, right? Like there's plenty of cases where I've done that, but um, I don't know how he would have done it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, let me just. Ethan, do you have any questions? Um, no, not so far. Okay, cool. Looks good. Thank Looks you. Looks really good. All right, so we got 4.875. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do an extruded cut. And we're going to end up with a shape like this. Okay. So you can see how this, I mean, it's quite a, and that looks proportional. So that, that looks, that looks right. So I, I was just getting myself confused by stuff. So what he did was he did an extruded cut offset from this 0 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch. Okay. Um, I don't know what to name that. Alrighty. So, are you guys following so far? Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm gonna create a mirror plane that we're gonna be mirroring some stuff across here. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and hide this because we won't need that again, probably. Let me see, will we need that again? I don't think so, I think we're done with that, all right? Um, so, go ahead and start up on this. Now we need to do the counter bores, right? Don't worry about the counter sinks, we'll deal with those later. Those are cosmetic, really, as far as you, know, you would normally be concerned. They're only not cosmetic insofar as whether or not you have clearance for the screws you're using, okay? which doesn't matter to your, you know, consumer at the end of the day. So, we know this is 0 0.26, we remember that from before, okay? And we don't have a sex bolt, so we don't need to worry about that. So all we're gonna be doing is this, we're gonna do an extruded cut. Now, the reality is, it's very tempting to say, oh, this, this probably goes down, you know, and, and, and so we'll see, it, it may. In fact, let me, let me check before I, uh, so it actually looks like he may have done it this way, but what is the overall thickness of this? So he did this a way it looks like that I would think, I, I would disagree with how he did it, okay? I think that when you're making models like this, you need to be doing offset from surface because it doesn't matter what the distance is from this point here right like the, from this top surface that's irrelevant all that matters is the size of your pivot barrel okay the distance between this point and the opposite point right it has nothing to do with this top this could be 10,000 feet high right it doesn't matter all that matters is the distance around here and so to offset it from something arbitrary like this can become a problem later if you change the thickness all of a sudden you machine it you don't think anything of it and now your barrels are too long or too short, 
uh, for what you're doing, right? So it, I'll tell you, it, it looks like he only milled it in a 16th of an inch, which makes sense because we do have slightly too thick handles. There's 0.505 in some places, probably from the burr, 0.503 in other places. It would make sense. It would explain uh, why this is measuring a little over a 16th of an inch, which is 0.065. But we want to create what he has as a CAD model. So we're going to go 0.065 offset from this surface here. I think that's the incorrect way to do it. Okay, but I think that's how he did it. Uh, I was just wondering, why are you using this over uh, Fusion? Is there any like, specific... Music? This is a better CAD software, and it's also what I'm more okay. familiar with. Yes. It's a very expensive CAD software. This is a very expensive CAD software. <laughs> yeah. You could do all of this in Fusion, but I don't like doing CAD in Fusion 360. Um, so I'm, I apologize. I forgot that you were planning to use, in Fusion, to use Fusion 360, and I should have clarified that I was going to be doing this in SolidWorks. It's a very similar process, though, okay? Um, and some things are different in Fusion, like how you had that... This is stuff that's really hard to explain. You had that the yellow case around your model when you're, like, showing what it would look like if you had the channeling before you even had it in. You even do that on Fusion? Yeah, it's just red instead okay. of yellow. So you think um, other knife makers will do stuff like where they just zoom in as far as they can to make it centered, but it's not perfect, but you know how to make it like actions. Well, they would take the calipers and they would measure it, right? And they would see it was 0 0.806 or something, or 0 0.713 or something like that, right? And they would just assume that that's the dimension to put. But what you're going to have happen is let's say that the tool you use to do this or your tool path, you didn't like it, the tool was dull or something. Right. Or the, you know, like, let's say that you're measuring um, this distance right here from here to here. Right. Let's say you measured this. Right. That's 0 0.1565. Let's say that he fucked up. You measured that. Let's say he fucked up and he didn't have the, the reference point right. So this slot was slightly off center. You measure this and instead of 0 0.1565, it's 0 0.15 or 0 0.153. If you just put 0 0.153 in, you end up with incorrect dimensions on the knife, right? So what it really pays to figure out how they did the model so that you can do it that way. Right, because if you do it the way they did the model, you're getting rid of a lot of tolerance stack issues, right? Because I don't know if, I don't know if this makes sense. Uh, just take my word for it. It's it's a lot better if you can get like it's a lot better to have their original CAD model than to have a perfect three D scan of a of a particular instance of their knife, right? Like, you, like, let's say you get a perfect scan of this exact handle that I have right here. The, the problem is, while you, you're going to get a, you know, if you can machine this so that it's, you know, exactly like this one, it will work. But, like, let's say that his was off by five thousandths, and you're also off by five thousandths in the same direction. Now, suddenly, it might not work right so it pays to try to figure out what his initial model was so that you get rid of whatever potential machining problems you know or imperfections he would have right so um yeah that makes sense cool so that's that's the reasoning behind that um all right we're gonna be starting back up here okay so everyone's ready mm -hmm. all right um so we've got the counter bore here okay and we want to mirror this feature over, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and actually, you know what? We can just do this all at once and hope it doesn't crash, okay? That seems like a really smart plan. Um, let's see, what do we do? So at the bottom, unfortunately, it's too dinged for me to see exactly what he did down here. Um, but clearly the fillet did not continue around at the same, but first, okay. So I wanna measure, um, Uh, this is annoying. I want to figure out essentially what this dimension is, but I might just have to do this in a sketch. You know, normally you don't really want to do it this way, but like I just I could not be uh, bothered in doing this. So it's not giving me the dimension the way I wanted it to. So 0 0.08. 
uh, and it looks like his fillet went exactly to it. So if you look at it visually, the fillet goes right up to the edge of the counterboard, or at least where it was chamfered, okay? So, which is probably intentional for the purpose of the visual appearance of it. Uh, the problem is you can end up with kind of a sharp burr from a round over bit if it's not sharp enough. Um, so, you, you know, you just, it's a potential problem. But um, we're going to, for the sake of just getting this as close as possible, we're going to just kind of, uh, you know, do something and then double check. Well, first, let's just do this and double check it here. Make sure I'm not going crazy. Okay, so the radius is, should be 0, 8. Okay. Um, which looks about right to me, right? You can even look down here at the bottom. That looks like a, approximately the right radius, a like corner radius mill. And the reality is something like this, um, when it came to doing a radius cut like this, it's probably worth it to him to buy a 0.08 um, radius thing. Or... Here's the other thing, okay? Um, two millimeters is, I believe, 79 thousandths. Is 78.7 thousandths. And so instead of buying a 0 0.08 round over bit, even though everything else here has been inch, he probably is using a two millimeter radius um, or corner radius mill. So instead of that, we're gonna actually change this to 0 0.0787. Okay, or we'll just change to zero point. Well, let's just do, if I just do millimeters, I don't. Hey, there we go, two millimeters. Exactly, cool. Um, ooh, I don't like what it did here, but it's just, it's whatever. Uh, it, it wouldn't actually, it wouldn't actually cause any problems with machining it. It's just, you gotta be really careful when you have lines that get really close like this, because it can, make it tough to do certain operations sometimes in the cam software. So that's what he's doing here, just so you guys know. Um, is he's using a two millimeter corner radius end mill. Uh, and so you can do that or you can spend a bunch of extra money on a custom 0 0.08 inch roundover bit, but he's probably not doing that. Um, he's pretty savvy at being a, an effective business person and I think also pretty savvy about machining things in an intelligent way and so I think in my opinion right for whatever it's worth this is probably a two millimeter corner radius okay but like I could be wrong just don't freak out at me uh, but I believe that's what's happening here okay now to make this simpler instead of actually you know doing the uh mirror let's just select both of them and do them at the same time Okay, James, does this look more like, and Ethan, you as well, does this look, does this look more like what you're familiar with? Yes. Yes, okay. it does. I can see it a lot better now. Right. So, you can see that there. Also, the benefit of this is, I wonder if he did 0.265, similar to the rep, and then it, uh, what happens is this would go out, and this line would suddenly become non-tangential to this, uh, which would potentially cause certain issues with machining, and so he actually made it 0.26, which I think is the right move anyway. You don't, you don't want the counterboards to be too big. It just doesn't look right. Um, so we'll do... Let's see. Um, we can go ahead now and... Oh, let's get rid of this. We don't need this. I just did that for the purposes of measuring. Um, I did that when I was videoing, right? That wasn't like while we were taking a quick break. Did what? When I when I put that sketch there and drew that line to get that measurement. Oh no, don't worry about it. Don't worry, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right. All right, so we need to select the mirror face slash plane. We're gonna select this mirror plane, conveniently named, uh, and we're gonna mirror this feature, okay? Okay, and now we've got the counter bore on both sides. It might be wise to check that his counter bore is actually the same on both sides. As dumb as it would be for him to make it different, it's possible. Yeah, it's the same on both sides. Um, 
when I used to hand make stuff, there were times where the drill went too far on one side, so I would go less far on the other side, and I would just tell people, like, you know, try to have these lined up so it's visually correct. Um, but when you're doing it with a CNC machine, there's really not a good excuse for that. But um, that's not what happened here, so. Um, all right, so we've got that there. Now, how do we want to do this? I'm taking some measurements right now. All right, so there's a few ways we could go about doing the uh, countersinks here, okay? These look like they were done with a countersink, not a chamfer mill. Although I don't know that for sure. They just look too polished and they have the same you know lines you'd expect from a countersink as opposed to the radial lines that you would get uh, with a chamfer mill. But that's irrelevant when it comes to actually uh, getting the model to be what you want. Okay, what matters is that the uh, the actual model itself is correct, okay? So, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. So this is, I'm, I'm right now I'm just eyeballing kind of, I'm trying not to scratch the countersinks. I'm eyeballing, admittedly in quite bad lighting, seeing what the, width at the top of the countersink is. And it looks like it's 730 seconds approximately. Uh, let's see, what is 730 seconds again? Maybe I'm misremembering this. Yeah, no, I was right. Okay, it looks like 730 seconds for the main ones and then it's uh, a quarter inch at this bottom one. So we're actually gonna do that, okay? Even though I know that's, you know, um, kind of a, a little bit of extra work, we're gonna do it that way anyway. So. Uh, we're going to do the two that are the same size here. Uh, why is this? Okay, so now we're going to go through. Uh, we're not going to do any of this default. We're going to go through with custom sizing. The whole diameter, we just need to be less than... Um, this whole diameter, right? Uh, so that we don't actually change the dimensions of this. Now, the width of the top of the countersink, 730 seconds of an inch, okay? Now, it's probably a 90 degree countersink, okay? But um, I don't know, and this, this is irrelevant. This is the angle of the drill itself. So this is basically like if you drilled a hole to the bottom and there was a countersink at the top, this is the angle of the countersink, this is the angle of the actual drill itself, which for me is actually 135 degrees, not 118. Um, and in fact, it's probably 135 degrees for him. But since this is a through hole, it doesn't make a difference. Um, oh, I clicked on the wrong plane. All right. Um, let's see, it's better. So we'll do that. Okay, so we've got those there. Um, and then we're gonna add another one down here. Like I said, this one at the bottom actually has a slightly bigger countersink, okay? And it's a quarter inch as opposed to seven thirty seconds of an inch, okay? So we're gonna click on this and put it right in the center there. We're gonna change this to be 0 0.25, okay? Um, so, this is, you said that they're bigger now on the bottom. So if you wanted to, you could make this hole larger. So in fact, I'll show people how to do that. Um, we can do it here without even doing it in the uh, drawing, but that's kind of a bad idea because you start to lose track of like where you made certain changes. Um, but we'll make this 0 0.1875 here temporarily so you can see what it would look like. So you guys who are using newer ones can visually verify that it's actually uh, the same, okay? Um, 
and this actually is is better to me because you'll notice that these are uh, the uh, appearance like it looks like the same size chamfer All right now let me think so if you go from 5 30 seconds to 7 30 seconds that's a 16th of an inch and you go from 3 16th to 4 16th which is a quarter inch is a 16th of an inch so in fact these are the same size chamfers right um does that make sense so for whatever reason he changed like this handle right here was this is actually probably a very rare handle if i had to guess because it appears that he drilled this and after drilling this handle and getting it cut out and stuff he changed his cam his tool paths to a, a, essentially account for a larger hole there which is why this appears to be a different size chamfer right because it's got a quarter inch countersink here because he changed the model okay but basically he drilled this handle before changing the model and milled it after changing the model so i don't know how many handles there are like this in existence but it could be a quite rare handle okay um and it would make sense because the other handle is properly sized right so does that make sense guys yes mm -hmm. um now i'm gonna go ahead and well I'm going to I'm going to change this but I'm actually going to edit the original thing to uh to reflect the the change that I just made, okay? Okay. Because I think this is going to be more apt to ooh, not that, it's the wrong thing. I think this is going to be closer than uh or closer to what people are going to be working with now. I'm deleting this one constraint so this is no longer an equal radius with these two, right? Cuz it is no longer equal. We're going to be changing this to be 3 16 There we go. And you're going to notice that after I do this, it's going to update and see how it looks correct now. Um, the question is, uh, yeah, 0 0.5 looks like a proper radius for this bottom here. Um, it's really hard for me to say what he did as far as a fillet or something on this base here. Um, I don't know. I'm not really sure. Uh, we're gonna just do something that looks approximately correct, but just understand that by doing this, you're potentially causing yourself problems when it comes to machining it, okay? But for the purposes of creating an accurate model, um, I'm going to just, appro or, or at least an approximately correct model, I'm going to approximate this to be um, 130, eh, 130 second. How does that look? No, that's a little bit too aggressive, I think. Try using one millimeter. Maybe he used millimeter on that again for some reason. Or could he, he could have just put 40 thou or something like that. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm guessing. I want to be clear. I'm kind of guessing here, just trying to make it look approximately right. But that could be incorrect, okay? Um, in fact, it almost guaranteed it is almost guaranteed to be incorrect, all right? Um, but we got that here. So, all right. Remaining things. So we got the jimping on the sides, and there's a slot that he does down here. Okay. Now the question is, what radius tool or what diameter tool did he use to do this uh, slot? This this little uh, ball nose kind of slotting cut that he did down the center of the handles. My guess is an eighth of an inch. Just looking at it, that could be incorrect. Okay. Um, if you really wanted to figure this out, there's a few different ways you could do it. Okay. The easiest is going to be taking a, a a few different size drill bits that you think might be the size resting it in the slot if it rolls around like resting it lengthwise in this slot if it rolls around like let's say you think it's um three thirty seconds of an inch you put a three thirty second inch drill bit in there and it, it can kind of roll around in there that means the drill is too small okay if you put it in and it doesn't roll around, that doesn't mean you found the right size. It could be too large, okay? Because if it's too large, it's now, and maybe I should wait until I have it modeled to explain this, but it would be contacting the two raised sides, but it still wouldn't be moving. Um, 
so you'd want to find the smallest size drill that doesn't roll around or rattle or anything in there and it would probably be an eighth of an inch but if you wanted to be extra sure you could put some prussian blue or something in there and slide it back and forth and and see what is getting scraped off if it's just the points then it is too large of a drill right um but let's get this modeled all right um trying to think he may not have actually modeled this in the CAD there's a very real chance he he drew a line in the cam software and did what's called a trace operation okay so keep that in mind um All right, so, hmm. It's kind of funny, Jay, remember how I was complaining about how I was not happy about how that countersink was a different size? It actually makes sense now. How if, so? Just because I think he switched the size of that hole, but he had already drilled this handle, and he so he switched the finishing code, basically, as though all the remaining handles to be finished were ones that had 3 inch holes at the bottom, but this one didn't. It still had the 5-32-inch hole. So, <clears throat> so it got finished unevenly. And he was See. like, sure ship it out kind of thing which i don't think is unreasonable for the price point he's going for at all so um right now i'm just trying to get some measurements here all right So we'll give this a shot. I don't know for sure um, that this is how he had has done this, but um, hmm. let's go ahead and we're going to create a uh, vertical construction line here, okay? going to be tangent with this all right and we're going to start okay we've now created this infinite length one this is going to be parallel with this okay and this looks Again, it's probably an eighth of an inch. In fact, it's probably the same cutter he used for the other operation. Okay, it literally is probably the exact same tool number in his machine. Um, I don't know that for sure, but generally you want to minimize the number of uh, tool changes you're doing. So we're going to go with that. We're just going to assume that I'm correct. Okay, we're going to make this eighth of an inch. All right. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take an outside measurement, okay, of um, the handles at one point here, okay, five two eight. I'm going to try to get a little bit farther in here just so there's less. Uh... Okay, so 0 0.495. Let me write that down. Okay, 0 0.495 and 0 0.4815. I'm just going to say 0 0.481.
All right, so that is 14 thou, okay? And that means it'd be a seven thou cut per side. Now this is a 0 0.125 inch tool, which means a 0 0.065 inch radius. So we're gonna do um, 0 0.0625, so it'd be 0 0.055, let's say. Okay, um, so we'll do that, okay? And now if you measure from the center of these holes, okay, as you ripple this pattern along, it's about 0 0.2 inches, like very, very close, something very close to 0 0.2 inches, okay? And so, um, I cannot get this to do the degree or the measurement the way I want it to. I'm trying to do a linear, like, direct dimension no but I can't do it that way um oh sh shit all right um There we go. Okay, we're trying to get the angled measurement, 0.2. So 0.2, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pattern here, all right? We're gonna create a linear sketch pattern, okay? The direction, instead of the x-axis, we're gonna delete that, we're gonna clear, we're gonna select this. Wait, can we select this, please? Excuse me, please, somebody. Um, entities to pattern, I don't know, I'm just gonna assume it clicked it. Uh, flip x-axis direct, oh, thanks. I'm, I'm, I really appreciate that it actually definitely flips the direction. That's just really just brilliant. I love it. There we go. Um, it's on the X axis. How, come on. Can we do this? That looks right. Okay. Brilliant. I love it. Okay. Um, and let's see, how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to change this up to eight. And they're 0 0.2 apart, right? I know this looks closer than, than you think, right, when you look at these circles. But remember, this is a full circle, right? We're not cutting the full circle in, right? So you see how it's following along, so we're getting the same depth of cut on all these, okay? So we're going to go ahead and click OK on that, okay? And we're going to add a dimension between these points here, 0 0.2 inches, okay? This right here is the number, okay? And... We're going to create a mirror. Oh, we don't have a uh, center line. You guys still following along? Any questions? Um, so you took the dimensions of the, like, how did you get the exact radius of the jimping? I didn't. Or are you just guessing? I didn't. You could do it the same way that I said you could do the other one, right? Like, you, you could definitely figure this out, especially if you had, you know, pin gauges or something. You could get an incredibly accurate measurement of that. Um, you can measure, for example, it's harder on a tapered handle like this, okay? But you can measure, for example, in fact, here, let me s remind me of that question. I want to I wanna make the model first. It's going to be easier to explain, okay? Fair enough? Yes. Okay. So right, we're going to do this. Something you did a while ago, but when did you figure out the curvature of the bottom of the handle? Bottom of the handle okay. here? Uh, yeah. Um... So honestly, I just looked at it and it looked, I just, it, to me, it looked like it was about a one inch diameter or 0 0.5 inch radius. And I put 0 0.5 in as a placeholder in case, like, just to kind of see what it looked like. It looked completely correct. Um, there are ways you could try to measure that. Um, what I was thinking is like, you use the hole for reference and see the amount of space between the hole and the uh, top of the handles without, if it was flat, and then from the point where it's so flat on the side of handles to the top. And you could measure, it, now right. this implies that you know this radius here, okay? But you could measure the distance between this point here and the wall of this, that would be That's exactly what I'm talking about. I yes. 
Okay, yeah, I had a feeling that's what you were talking about. So yes, you could do that, although that would require that you know what this radius is, okay, of this arc right here. Because if that is greater, then this becomes a, a lesser distance, right? So it becomes hard to get an actually accurate measurement using that, but you can certainly get a good idea of it, right? But honestly, I just kind of eyeballed it. Like, it just looked about right to me. I mean, if you yeah, have it like... looks good. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it looks correct to me too. But yeah, that's uh, anyway. Let's uh, we'll we'll do this extruded cut here, so you guys can see the jumping. We're gonna do through all both. Okay. I just want to say that's a really fancy way of saying you guessed. Well, I have to sound <laughs> pretentious. I'm worried that I won't sound pretentious enough. Okay, so these don't line up quite perfectly with the jumping. Okay, it looks maybe a little bit too close on the bottom here. Yeah, I think they're a little bit too close together they're not too close together but this starting distance here wait where did i define the start oh here because the i'm not sure if it's the same on the v1 but on the one that i'm looking at the second slot lines up with the almost end of the cut of the channel wait the second it might be slot different. yeah it might be different because well, there's, different... there, there are eight on mine. It, it, does, there, it has a cut here and a cut here. I don't know if that's what you're saying. Like you're saying that there's only, it doesn't go have these. these mine has these. Okay. These two here. Mine um, also has seven. Interesting. So I guess it goes yeah, a little bit farther up then. Yeah, I was going to say that too because mine yeah. has two before the channel starts. So you just have to trust me. Then. This is an accurate representation of what I have. Um, okay. But. You have um, eight gems. Huh? You have eight, Jim? Yes. Eight cuts, there's eight on this. I never noticed that. That there was a different amount of jimping. Wait a second. This is not lining up correctly, though. So here's an easier way. Measure from the, the first one to the last one, and then divide. Also, on my crack in the newer one, it's, uh, the channel is not rounded at the bottom. Like where your pointer is, it's straight. Is it for you too, Jim? Is Say again? Right here? Uh, yeah. That That's because it was done with a T slot cutter. So it's actually, it, it, you're, you are correct that yours is that way. And, and his is as well, his, his other one. But the one I have, since it's a V1, was done in a different mm -hmm. manual. It has a different yeah. method of manufacturing. Okay. So, yeah, um, there's just a lot of little things I'm missing. Um, this, I did not do this correctly. This is, something's not right about this. Um, can we edit this? Uh, okay. My guess is, let's see. This is 1.5 inches overall. So we're gonna need to do 1.5 divided by seven. I believe I did that correctly. 1.5 divided by seven. So it should be 0 0.2143. So. Okay, now let's see how this lines up. Because what he did was 1.5. He did it over a distance. He didn't do it by a separation. He did it to an extent. Okay, that's how he did this. Now, where does how's this line up? Looks looks correct. Um, starting point end point looks looks very very close to correct. Now, th this is something that I mean, if you took a high resolution scan of of this one and the real one, you would find a, a slight misalignment here. You could do a better job by taking a high resolution scan of the side of this and you could get much, much, much closer. But I, I don't want to do any scanning right now. Um, but also, this is- at the um, ends of the handles there. Um, sorry, I don't mean if I cut you off. Did I? Uh, I would be offended either way, but no, you didn't. Okay. Um, at the ends of the handles, Right, I see that you've got a little bit of rounding going on. Yes. Right. I don't think that the V1 had that level of rounding. Okay. So but was there just it's not no... necessarily important? Was it just like that when you got it? It wasn't exactly like that. Um, I I can't quite remember here. Let me see if I can pull up a picture. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and DM me when you've got that or whatever. Um. 
That's what mine looks like. It doesn't have any rounding. There's none? Well... Can you text me a picture of it? Yeah. So the... All right, so... Um, basically, the, what the, the point I would like to make is, what's going on here is he has instead of doing it as a distance between each one he's basically said that the distance between this first one and this last one in fact i wonder if we could do that can we can you change it by I'll doing send you a picture can i change it by doing it like this 1.5 oh it works Woo! okay I, I i didn't know if you could actually adjust it later that way um so we've now said the distance between this one and this one is 1.5 which is what he did um Okay, yeah. Oh, that makes this easier. Okay, so yes. Um, all right, I'll, I'll make that change in a second here. So we got this here. This is probably 0 0.21, I, I don't know. Obviously, if you change this, it's gonna shift the entire thing. It's not gonna actually change the spacing of the individual ones, but uh, let's see this. I mean, it looks really close, okay? So yeah, this fillet is not there, okay? Let's see what's it what's it unhappy about um okay it's because this was tangent to basically technically a different line all right so we'll fix that that fixes it okay so what he did is um this is a lot easier to do in cam software let me see if i can get it to do this without extending for the tangent propagation So tell me if this looks right, James. Okay, so he has this, and then there's a slight rounding that's done on this. Let's see if we can replicate that. Yes, yes. It's like, um, not exactly rounding. It's more of like a chamfer. I don't know if that's exactly correct. Something like this. Yeah, yeah. Looks like what he did. Because this is an easier thing to do when you're milling the side, right? That's easy to do. This is easier to do for a chamfer. To do an actually like an actual fillet slash chamfer on a curve, like a 3D part like this, gets you you're talking way more complicated and actually way more way more machining time. Which is why I was like, I don't know that he did it that way, right? Um, like I said, he's a pretty savvy businessman, right? Not to assume his gender. I'm sorry, bro. Okay. Or <laughs> yeah, businessman's not a gender, Doug. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, um, but anyway, so yeah, that's uh, it. Looks like that's what he did. But again, he didn't do this probably in the cat. He he probably did this in the toolpath, right? So, uh, like, I'm torn on whether I should leave it in the model. I, I'm I'm really leaning towards I, I shouldn't. But if you want to make an accurate model of it, this is what you would do. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think that it was difficult for you to tell whether or not it was fully rounded because it was so beat yes it's because of how badly it was beat i'm sorry yeah you better be sorry bro <laughs> never had to apologize for how <laughs> poorly i treat my knives before. i'm just kidding bro i'm just poking fun but um yeah so that's likely what's done here and he might or might not touch his up by hand or with some tumbling but anyway uh let's yeah see i this. think that's dope for you think I like it with the more rounded edges. Mm-hmm. Gimping. Wait, isn't that spelled correctly? I think it might be J. Are you sure? I always thought it was a G for some reason. Nope. Yeah, it's, it's right. a J. Okay. We're not going to talk about that. That's so weird. I always thought it was a G. I'm such an idiot, bro. It's unreal. All right, uh, all right, so the final thing we really got to do to get this model going, aside from the Zen pin, okay, is this kind of cut here. Let me see if there's a way. Uh, I, I'm not sure entirely on this, okay? Um, That kind of reminds me of um, there was this typo in Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. Uh, 
where instead of spelling it assess, they spelled it asses. So <laughs> I just thought that was imagine kind of cussing relevant. in my Christian Minecraft server. Yikes! Yeah, bro. I'm so sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. Yeah, you better. Be. <laughs> How fucking dare you? Um. All right. So this goes up here. We're, what we're going to be trying to do here is an extruded cut along a path, like a, a, a cut along a path, basically. So let me try to get, um, I'm just going to eyeball this. The Palatheus method. <laughs> that man does it by feelings, not by eyeballing. <laughs> Yeah, feelings don't care about your facts. I know. So I'm just going with the calipers right now. We can adjust this later if we need to. Because um, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know that this is going to work. I, I haven't actually ever tried doing it this way. Um, Sorry, I don't mean to like throw shade on your channel or anything. Uh, I'm already really upset, bro. Like, deeply. Good. Okay, so I like to keep it. We're gonna do so. I actually I was not thinking about this correctly. Uh, we need to edit this, and we need to make it. Oh wait, There's something's not right about this. Oh yeah, yeah, it looks a little thin. You look a little thin, bro. You need to eat more. Damn. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. How could you? Uh, it's actually quite easy, to be honest with you. This looks about right. Um, Can I see the tip of it? It's uh, round at the tip. I, I, bro, one step at a time, please. How could you? How could you do this to me? I'm just pointing stuff out, all right? Um... Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a swept cut again. We're going to be rotating this around this point here. We're going to put an axis through this point. We're going to rotate it up to basically get that the shape that we want, okay? That was a lot of jargon in a little bit of time. Uh, swept cut axis. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just insecure, okay? Get off my case, bro. Jeez. All right. Um, so I'm noticing that you work on a lot of layers. It's kind of like um, art, like digital art. People work in a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. All right, how do we? OK, here's what we're going to do. So we're going we're gonna to do this, so two, where two planes intersect, okay? But we need to create that second plane. This plane is going to be coincident with, oh. It's going to be coincident with this, okay? So basically, think of this plane if it were enlarged, right? The plane is technically infinite, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to create an axis where this plane and this plane intersect, right? Okay. Okay. Um, We're going to do a swept cut. The profile is going to be this. And, oh, actually, no, not a swept cut. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. A revolved cut. Okay. Ooh. We're going to do this. Oh, no. I. All right. This is getting out of control. Nope. Not extruded. Nope. Nope. Come on, Doug. Stick with it. Uh, is it not going to let me just select this? All right. We need to. I don't, you, normally you don't want to be doing sketches in this kind of 3D view, but I'm kind of running out of patience right now. Okay, we're going to make this offset by zero. Did you have zero. any patience to begin with? Uh, I would prefer not to talk about that, please. Um, exit sketch. Axis of revolution is going to be the axis that we've just created. Okay, we're going to click go. And there you go. Ooh. Right. So, um... Thought it was a revolving cut. It's the cleanup for the swept cut, you pretentious ass. Okay, damn.
don't know how I'm the one being pretentious. I'm not pretentious, bro. I just think I'm better than everybody. Okay, that's a big difference. Doug is better than everyone, though. Wow, imagine not having the wisdom that Ethan has. Yikes, bro. Main handle fillet. Fillet! God, I hate you, bro. All right, we're going to hide this. Hide this. Okay, so you, you see, would you agree that looks about right? Yes. Okay. Um, and it's definitely like it, it, the appearance has slimmed down. I, it, it was definitely an illusion because it was just filled out. What do you mean? You know, um, rounding has really like area. reduced the size. Yeah. What's up, Ethan? The area where the blade goes, the uh, cutout on the back of the handle. Yeah, that. It looks really big right now, but I, it's just like an illusion, I bet, because the blade, there's no blades and stuff. Yes. It is really that big. Yes, it is really that big. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine the blade. Mm -hmm. that is. But for because... mine, that's also not rounded. Yes, because it was performed with a different tool. Yes. So it, it, it's a, there's a difference in the way that you're, a fundamental difference in the way that yours was manufactured versus this one. And I think the way that yours was manufactured and the way that your other one, Jane, was manufactured is a very, very intelligent way of doing it. It's cleverer. Um, cleverer. Without, obviously, you don't want to just stick an R on the end there, but exactly it's very clever. clever yeah it's very clever <laughs> <laughs> um all right we're gonna create a mirror okay the mirror face plane again we're gonna click the same one okay features to mirror we got a lot to mirror here okay so we're gonna mirror this we're gonna mirror this and we're gonna mirror this i'm surprised i actually didn't know that you were capable of saying good things about other people that's a good point i didn't realize that either it took a lot of effort if that makes sense. Um, okay, so we've mirrored this around. All right. So there you go, right? You can see how that was done there. Um, hmm. Now the last thing to figure out is going to be the Zen pin, right? Which it's now that we have all these other things dimensioned, it, it can sometimes, like when you go revisit something like this, it's easier to get it kind of figured out. I... Let's give this a try. So what I'm wondering is, could you just measure the distance between the end of I got the it. cut? You got it? I think I got it, yep. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually be creating a, uh, oh, you know what, we can do it on the top, but I'm gonna show you guys another way of doing this, okay? We're gonna create a sketch on this middle plane here. I, I think I got it though, yeah. Um, this is 0.125, actually it's 123, okay. And now the distance from this to this, see if you if you put it, uh, depending on, oh, it's actually, no, no, okay, because this is, never mind, forget I said anything, we're not gonna talk about it, 0 0.25, this is 0 0.25 inches, okay? Now, I need to get, this is actually a really bad way to do this, I don't like, like, I'm not saying the way, uh, so to be clear, I'm not saying what he did was really bad, the way I'm getting this measurement is really bad for a few reasons. Um, But it's going to give me an idea, a rough idea of where it's placed. Okay, we're going to be changing this later, I think. Ooh. Okay, clearly that didn't work. What am I doing? What did I do wrong here? See how much it's moving? This is why this is a bad way to measure it, okay? A very small change here because of basic, like the way that triangles work, has a huge dis difference in where this goes. Um, and I was actually, I didn't even, even though I knew it was a bad way to measure it, even I was not really realizing just how bad it was. Uh, so I thought I was gonna be able to get it relatively close, but man, you would need some really precise measurements to get that anywhere close. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do it this way. Is 
Is that correct? Yeah, it is. Wow, that's close. Okay. All right. Um, make sure to cut through both, through all both. That's the Zen pin location. See, it looks about right. Um, now you gotta be careful. Looks about right is not sufficient for a Zen pin location. Okay, so um, if you really need this to be accurate, you, you, you gotta be willing to sacrifice the handle and punch that pin out. Okay, and you actually don't have to sacrifice the handle really to do that. It's just uh, you're running some risks that you may not wanna run. Um, now to verify this, I'm gonna actually try getting We're gonna try something real quick. Oops, that was wrong. That's not horizontal. Uh, that is perpendicular to this. Oh, it's actually not going to work that way. So it needs to be parallel with this. And problem is, how do we get this at the farthest away point? This is close enough. I, I want to measure something here. 3.249. Point two four seven, two four eight. It's close enough. I think this would work fine. Okay. Um, so, would you be able to verify these dimensions by making uh, a blade? Yeah, like yes. by modeling the blade and then putting the blade on mm -hmm. there. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's actually what my next step would be. Although I'm not going to do that right now. Um, So we're gonna go back to this. So there you go. That's a Zen pin hole. So now basically you can see what I think is quite an accurate recreation of a V1 Kraken handle with the updated hole diameter down here. But you see how it's a very slow process of working through this. We go back to the stock, yeah. right? There's the primary channel cut. Right, we're doing one thing at a time here, slowly building up. I could maybe get to that, that channel cut. Mm-hmm. Get the counter bores. Well, actually, I should really name that counter bore. What were they named before? Counter bores as opposed to counter bore, because there's only one that's being done, right? See how there's no counter bore down here, but there's one up here. We need to mirror it, so that's where I do right here. So we mirrored it over. I see. Main handle fillet. Okay. And you can see here we do the first countersink middle. Countersink at the I bottom. I felt some uh, disdain in that fillet. How so? Like, you're just imagining that I was going to pronounce it fillet. Oh. So you're just like, fillet. The fillet. <laughs> the fillet. Um, get this little chamfer at the end. Fillets on the corners there. And you get this pattern cut here, right? But you can see obviously this needs to be rounded because you're doing this with a rotating tool. And obviously it's gonna be the same radius as the rest of this, right? So we go back through, mirror it all over and do the Zen pinhole. There you go. Is there anything I'm forgetting? Um, I don't think so. So that's how you- Texture. Yes, uh, but that is not something he does in CAD. That's something he does yeah, in the toolpath. Toolpathing. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to have to. Uh, frankly, I just I don't feel like modeling that. Um, you could. There, there is a way to do it. It's just it, it would be a real pain. What you would do is you would take probably a triangle. I would need a microscope to really see for sure. Um, but you would take what is likely a triangular profile. Okay, and you would do a, a circle with it and a swept cut in a circle then you would pattern that okay um 
and you would it would just take some practice. But at best, like the, your best bet would actually be to count the number of uh, patterns there and measure from one end to the other and then divide it out to figure out the approximate, right? Um, so I just want to make sure the texture is actually a radius like texture, correct? What do you mean by a radius? Like they are circles. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Do you want to know how you can tell? Uh, by looking at it. Well, I I wasn't gonna phrase it that way, but the lines are closer together on one side than the other. Yes. Yes, and that annoys a lot of people. They say that it's a very poor design. Uh, oh, I don't think it's a poor design. Yeah, but I personally think that people who think that are kind of short-sighted because I they think don't. You're short-sighted, bro. Imagine owning Actually, an aluminum knife in the first place. In the channel. I am short-sighted. I, I have a difficult thing seeing things that are far away. Wow. Imagine needing glasses in the 20s, bro. Yikes. What were you saying, Ethan? In the channel, does uh, in the V1, does it start rounding up in, by the back of the handle? You mean like here? No, in the back. No. Because, again, it was machined it's in a different flat. way. Yeah. Yeah, it, it rounds up. It's like a... Yes, it, it, because it was done with a T-slot cutter. Do you want to see what a T slot cutter looks like? Uh huh. Huh? Yeah, sure. All right. Um. All right. So obviously, I'm not going to cut the flutes in, but it looks like this. Okay. So it's rotating like this, and it comes in from the side and cuts this channel out. Okay. Okay. And that's not on this model. This is how it was done on yours. Okay. The yeah. one, the way this was done was basically, if you can just imagine, like, as if you're looking straight down, a cylinder is rotating and cutting in here, right? Mm -hmm. But this is how he's doing it now, which I think is a very, very good way to do it. Cool. cool. Any, any final questions? Anything else you want me to answer at all or anything? I'm good. Okay. Ethan, you got any questions, buddy? No. All right. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, thank, thanks for whoever ends up watching this video. I hope it was helpful. You know, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments, but the reality is I'm probably not going to be checking comments. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, bad news, but cool.